You guys, hoping this doesn't cut off. My camera's been cutting off whenever I try to go from my verses here to reopen open the camera, so I'll try to refrain from doing that until the very end so you can at least get the gist of what I'm saying. Got my house dress on. I was about ready to go to bed, but I had to do this. Um, <clears throat> a couple things happened. Uh, one, a gentleman asked me and said, I, I've been praying for the Holy Spirit, but I just haven't gotten it. Well, I wanted to explain to you that the Holy Spirit is something we receive by faith, okay? And it's given to us when we trust in Him. And I'm going to do a video after this, real short, addressing that, okay? So don't worry, I'm going to give you some verses Jesus gives us about being born again, okay? Uh, you receive the Holy Spirit, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise the moment you've trusted in Christ after you believe the gospel, okay? So I wanted to go through a few things here, um, and... In the end, I want to show you how this false doctrine is being supported by the false Bibles. Because in 2 Timothy, it says, Let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And the other ones say that if you name the name, you must abstain from sin. You must abstain from wickedness. So it's instead of saying what a person should do because the Holy Spirit's in them, we don't want to grieve them, we want to live our faith what we should be doing, it makes it part of being saved. And that can cause confusion. Let me be clear here that nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ washes away sins. And that once you've put your trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel that saved us, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, read it yourself till it gets in your head, that you get God's righteousness imputed on you. See, he's the just and the justifier of those who believe. He's holy and just, and he was he became sin for us who knew no sin, so we can become the righteousness of God, who has no righteousness. We we had there there is none righteous, no not one. So God's standard again is perfection. If you don't keep God's law one hundred percent in thought, word, and deed from birth till death. You can't be justified by anything you do. And once you get that understanding, there's almost a peace to it. You know, Luther struggled for a long time because he was trying to remember all his sins and confess every little sin. And the guy who was confessing, he was getting sick of it. He was like, come back with some big sins. These aren't big. And Luther was like, no, no, no. Every little sin separates me from God. And he understood it. But he came out of that bondage because he eventually understood, wait, I don't have to meet God's standard of perfection Christ met it for me. Remember, he said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Not one jot or tittle will be removed till it be fulfilled. And then later we're told that he took away the enmity written in the ordinances against us, in stone against us. That's the law. So he fulfilled God's law, which, which met his justice, and he took the wrath for our sin which took God's wrath on the unjust so that's why we can rest in what he did most don't believe this a true Christian understands and there seems to be so few of them that understand it has nothing to do with what they're doing we are justified of all things does that mean shall we sin so grace may abound God forbid why would we do that because what we do, we do unto God. And we should remember that how we treat others, it's how we're treating Jesus. Because he loves them. Remember, he said, whatever you give to do to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So that's one reason. But none of that is about being saved. So a person that's saved realizes just how short they fall of God's perfection. The problem is a lot of people really do think it's Jesus plus their living right. They'll tell you, well, I do my best to follow Jesus. That's why I'm going to heaven. No, you follow him imperfectly, just as everyone else has. And what are you going to do about those sins you had? It's only the blood of Christ, not the blood of Christ and you trying to follow Jesus right. All believers should follow Christ's example because he lives within us. And we should be listening to that voice and not our flesh. But this is a process of growth, growing in God's grace through the milk of the word. Our faith should be growing. These things take time and change as we're maturing. 
It's not some instantaneous thing. Well, if you're really saved, you won't sin. Everybody still sins. We struggle with the flesh all the time. So that's the first step. So we have to understand how much we fall short. One little teeny sin was enough. We were born in this iniquity. Okay, through the sin of Adam, just as it says, through one man's sin, uh, you know, basically one man's sin, all die. Through one man's righteousness, all live. It's Christ, you see? All right. The second thing we have to realize, only the death of Jesus Christ, his shed blood, cleanses us from that sin. That's why there is no other way to heaven. No other faith has a savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And he even said before in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, if there's any way this cup can pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So God paid God for our sin debt. God paid God for you. Can that payment be insufficient? Do you understand? God paid God. God the Son paid God the Father for us. They made an agreement between themselves to save us. Now, how can that be insufficient? I heard one pastor say it like this, that there's a judge in a courtroom and the guilty man is standing there at the desk and all of a sudden the judge takes off his judicial robe, comes down, puts $100 on the table, goes back up to his little judge seat and says, sir, you're going to prison for life if you don't pay the $100. And then he goes, oh, there it is. Comes down, takes the $100, puts it in his pocket, and says, you're free to go. God paid God for you. Do you understand? I want people to get this. I don't care how many. I, I get so many people mocking the real gospel, thinking they're doing somebody a favor by telling them you can lose salvation. Or uh, you never really had it to begin with unless you stopped your sins. You haven't stopped your sins either. You haven't stopped sinning. I'm telling you, you haven't. There's sins you don't know about, sins of omission. It doesn't matter. If you don't know you haven't stopped sinning, there's nothing I can do to help you. A man says there has no, he has no sin. There's no truth in him. And he's deceived himself. We have to remain understanding in this humble place of knowing that we fall short and will continue to fall short. We should be showing some progress. We should, because the Holy Spirit dwells in us the moment we put our trust in Christ and realize how lost we are. But we have to realize that it is absolutely in Him. And we also must have our confidence only in what He did. Only in what He did. Luther said he felt sorry for people that were looking to themselves and their law and their adherence and their sacraments and all the stuff they're doing because they're more damned than people that are just floating around not knowing anything about God. Because they're trusting in themselves. They're trusting in the law. And by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Only will he only accept his son. That's why he, he, I don't worry about it. Because I know, it says these things I tell you so you may believe in the name of the Son of God so you may know you have eternal life. I know I have it. It's a confidence. It's not a confidence in myself. That's why it's not arrogance. It's so funny to say the sin of presumption. What? It's presumptuous to take God at his word that he gives us eternal life and that life is in his son? No, it's not. So let me tell you, let me show you this real quick. Oh, please don't let this camera die. If it cuts off, I promise you it'll be near the end. All right. I wanted to show you something in these new corrupt versions versus what is in the King James. We all should depart from iniquity if we name the name of Christ. It gives God a bad name. It gives us a bad name. It's like hypocrites, bad witnesses, opens the door to Satan to destroy our lives, all kinds of stuff. Why would we do that, right? All right. Here's the King James. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. That's, that's why I always say, when people go, so you could just, that guy could just keep doing that and keep murdering and stay safe. Do you know what? Do you plan on murdering somebody? Okay, how about worry about your own self? How about do it God's way? How about just trust in Christ and don't plan on murdering anybody and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, don't worry about that guy. Just do it the way God said to. Put your trust in his son, what he did alone, and rest in that. And now go live for God in joy and peace. And yes, you will fail, but God will help you and you'll get better and better as you grow in his grace. You spend time in fellowship with him. The more energy and work you put into your faith and seeking God, the more you'll grow spiritually. Okay? 
That is why there's babes in Christ that don't live like they're saved because they never worked on their faith. And it all stems from this foundation of just being Christ. We are justified of all things. We are justified, perfected forever by one sacrifice. That's why the mass is an abomination. They are constantly re-offering Jesus's blood every single day in the mass. No, he received it once. Remember on the mercy seat of heaven? Yes, John MacArthur, the literal blood of Jesus saved us. He went to heaven and offered it. It says that. By this uh, sacrifice, once for all sacrifice, we are perfected forever. So it, it's horrible. Anyway, it says, but God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. Hmm. The Lord knows who are his. All who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Okay, when you put something like that up there, it makes it seem like, okay, but what, what if I fail? What if I fall tomorrow? What, you know what? All sins were future. And then once you deal with, uh, okay, so you got today's sins. What about tomorrow's sins? I'm going to fail again tomorrow. i got to remember all my sins and confess them too and make sure. This is bondage, people. We have liberty in Christ. We can trust what he did. And I'll tell you one thing. No matter what I fail, I know I fall short. And I do my best to get better. And I do my best to listen to his spirit and, and do what's good and right. But it's more of a heart condition on being there for people. And, and being loved to people and trying to be the best person I can be because I want to treat people as if they were Christ. So it, it's not a bunch of rules and, and anything that makes you turn to yourself for salvation is really wrong. And, and you have to see these little things that they change really does change the gospel. So I want to try to give you some things here on just trusting in Christ for your salvation uh, in Romans 4.25. Romans is a good book for that. Galatians is great. Um, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised up again for our justification to be declared innocent, to be declared righteous. Again, he wore our sin. We get to wear his righteousness. See, when we wear God's righteousness, our sins are white. They're white as snow. He said, though they be as scarlet, they're white as snow. Because it, it, people are are thinking that God's going to see my sin, but I'm under the blood of Christ. He, he's not going to see that in eternity. I'm trusting his son. You see, my works don't matter as far as, as making me righteous because they can't. They're, I mean, we know that with Cain and with Adam and Eve covering up their sin with their fig leaf righteousness and Cain offering his works. I mean, none of it saves us. Jesus only spoke harshly to self-righteous hypocrites, never to overt sinners. All right, Romans 5.18, therefore, as by the offense of one, there's Adam, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, that's Jesus, the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. It's a free gift, people. I don't know what's confusing about free gift. It's something we receive by faith. See, it's God's grace. We receive it by faith. How do we receive it? Believing him. So we shouldn't be questioning do I really have did he really save me God paid God for you how can that be wrong how can he not receive that payment you see it, it's it's a perfect salvation that's why it's called so great a salvation and good news if the news you're getting for salvation isn't good it's not the gospel come on here we go Romans 117 for therein the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. I believe Habakkuk foretold that. And Paul is quoting Habakkuk, the Old Testament prophet. Romans 5.16 And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, that's Adam, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Okay? That's Jesus' sacrifice. I, I, I don't know why people just can't get this. All right. Romans 4.16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, that's the Jews, but to also that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is a father of us all. Now, what about Abraham? He believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. We believe God. His report of his son, that he gave us eternal life. There is life in no other. 
There is uh, no promise of salvation in any other but Jesus. And I think when we get the realization of God's love for us and what he did for us, I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. God, who didn't need us, he's holy in heaven, he's perfect, doesn't need anything, out of his love decided to humble himself, come in human form, die a torturous death, be mocked by his own creation, rise from the dead, defeat death, and and save us from the penalty of our own sin. That is love. And that's our God. And that's where we have to get on this. We really need to find some peace about it. You know, um, we just can't look to ourselves. I really just want people to get this. I, I don't know why. I, I, don't, I don't know why people have um, a problem with it. And, you know, my friend R.L. mentioned something. And I've tried to explain this before. How some things just aren't sin unless you do them against your own conscience. I've said that to people before when I used to smoke the cigarettes. I'd be like, I really just don't feel bad about it. I mean, a lot of things are bad for my body. Overeating, eating sugar, processed foods, caffeine, BC powder for crying out loud. You know, I just don't really feel bad about it. I just don't feel like it's that big a deal. I stopped for health reasons. Not, not because I, I thought it would make me more or less safe. But when a person does something against their own conscience, because I get stuff, is go is going to this, listening to this music sin, is watching this movie sin, you know what, let your conscience, let, let the Holy Spirit guide you, not your conscience, because the heart of a man is wicked. But let, let the Holy Spirit guide you, you know, because in Romans it talks about how certain things aren't a sin unless you make them. And he also says, to the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled, all things are defiled because they, they're they just wicked. They, every sin conscience, everything is sin, everything. It's just crazy. We need to rest in what Christ did, not live in this fear because perfect love casts out fear. Romans 14, 23, it says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if you're doing something because it's out of fear and, and you're trying to earn God's, that, that that's sin. It's sin. When you, we who have believed have entered into rest, we are told to fear not entering into that rest because he died once for all. We need to be resting knowing what he did. I mean, do you think it's pleasing to God to doubt that the Savior actually accomplished saving us? No. If Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, then why can't I believe when he tells me that his son died for me? And if I put my trust in that, he seals me with the Holy Spirit of promise. How long? Till the day of redemption when he comes to redeem this body and gives me my glorified body. I'm going to believe him. And don't let anybody shake your face. Remove, renew your mind daily. And all of the verses uh, about changing behaviors and living for God and crucifying the flesh, these are all good things. And these are instructions to already saved people. All of the instructions in the New Testament epistles are to already save people. Timothy and Titus are two pastors about pastoring and starting churches. And they have very specific instructions and standards for those people that are leaders of churches. This is about being saved. All right. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do you remember the Judaizers in uh, Acts said uh, there was a lot of contention and the, it was all new and, and Paul had really gotten the full revelation of God's grace and he said I didn't receive it a man nor was I taught it but from the revelation of Jesus Christ himself and he was saying believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified salvation is for him that worketh not but believes on him who justifies the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness and then in Acts they got together and figured out the Holy Ghost gave no such commandment that you had to be circumcised or keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. Okay? It's clear in there. The Holy Ghost gave no such commandment. And then they gave them a couple of things they should do. Stay away from meat offered to idols and fornication. That, that was what he said they should do. Okay? So, um... Our righteousness isn't earned because of our behavior, but because of Jesus's. See, by the obedience of one, Jesus's obedience, it's put on our account. I mean, it's really amazing if you if you can get this revelation in you. And when you do, you really love him. I mean, I didn't love him until I got this. I didn't go out here and talk about God and 
I've had so many people say, I'm excited about my faith again. I'm reading my Bible again. Because they're seeing through the eyes of grace the way it's supposed to be seen. And they don't fear that they're not living up and they just give up. Say, so forget it. I've seen people want to leave the faith because of these false gospel messages. Remember, it said there'd be some that come in and trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And they do. Subverting your souls. All right. Let's see. All right, Galatians 3.23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. And it has been revealed. Remember, that's a new covenant. All right. Galatians 2.16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. See, it's his faithfulness, his uh, righteousness, his obedience that we're justified by. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. It's his faith, his faithfulness. You see, we are justified because we believe on him and his perfection on our behalf, not our own. All right. And Corinthians says we walk by faith, not by sight. That's actually from an Old Testament prophet, too. Not Habakkuk. It was another one that says that we walk by faith, not by sight. Galatians 3.12, and the law is not of faith. What does it just say? That if it's not of faith, it's sin. Oh, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Because cursed is every man who does not keep everything in the law. Can't do it. Nobody's ever done it. Okay, I have so many of these, but for now, you get the gist of it. I've done lots of videos on um, being justified by faith alone and just putting your trust in what Christ did. But I wanted to give you that little um, story that I heard a pastor say about the judge paying for it because God really did pay God for me. And I know the payment was received, and that's what I put my trust in. And I really, I, I mean, I'm out here every day trying to give you grace and answering questions on grace and how we can grow in that. Um, and for the gentleman that had the problem with the Holy Spirit, I'll give you some verses on it. But Jesus explained when he was talking to Nicodemus, you must be born again. He even said, we don't know where the wind's coming from or where it's going. So it is with the Holy Spirit. It's not always going to manifest in some miraculous way. So, oh, if you don't speak in tongues, you know, you know what tongues in the Bible are languages. And it does speak about uh, angelic languages. If we speak in the tongues of angels and have not love, we're a clean same symbol and all of that. But as far as that being proof you're saved, that's that's not true. That's It's a spiritual gift. Okay? There's no record uh, that, all the, that you had to have some, like, overwhelming emotional experience in order to be sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. It tells you that you're sealed. He said, in whom we trust. And he's always reassuring the saints that they have the Holy Spirit. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit because he lives in you now because you've trusted in Christ. Remember? After that, we heard the gospel of our salvation. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God and his salvation. He also said, I come to you knowing nothing but Christ and him crucified. And that all his works of the law and his righteousness was counted as dung. It was worthless. Because it didn't save him and it couldn't save him. So I'm just trying to give people some peace here and to stop looking at themselves. And if you just can't get it, come on. I mean, I let people uh, leave things on my channel. Uh, sometimes they come around and they get it. But a lot of times they come on here just to condemn and confuse, you know, mocking it as easy believism. I don't care if you're, it's easy or hard for you. Apparently, it's not easy for you to just simply believe God and then have it be counted to you for righteousness. And that's why I'm out here doing that. I'm not out here, you know, working for the devil, trying to make people sin more. Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And you know what the strength of sin is? The law. So the more you condemn and put rules and bondage on people, the sin abounds. It makes it harder for the sin to get rid of it. Because they're not resting in what Christ did. And they're under condemnation and fear. When we have peace with God, knowing what Christ did, these things, they start to come off. It Sometimes it takes a while. Some things are strongholds. But it will get better. I'm telling you just to rest in what Christ did. Spend time in fellowship with him. 
Read your Bible through the eyes of grace and rightly divide it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you read it. I'd suggest the King James because the other ones, they really do um, have a Catholic type works mentality added to them. And it's just messed up. I can't, I, I can't read them. But in any case, I just wanted you guys to have some peace. And I was just kind of, I couldn't go to sleep until I told you guys that. All right. God bless.